The special election edition of Focus on Liberia this is our post election special. We are delving into the question elections are over. What next? My guest is Choo Choo Alice Jones. Choo Choo, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you very much, Dennis, and uh, compliments of the season to all Liberians. And uh, we hope that uh, we can move forward into next year with hope and aspirations and good fortunes. Many happy returns. Uh, it's time for uh, the post-election shenanigans, somebody said. Elections are over. I know the elections were, you know, hot, debated, you know, campaign. But right now, the results have been announced. Today, I heard that uh, even the referendum results were given. So, uh, People won, people lost, and that's how it is in all elections. But uh, the question is, what next? How do we move forward? What is in it for Liberia? And how can we forge ahead and get those things that we all anticipate for this great country of ours? And uh, so for this post-election uh, talk, which is after elections, what next? What we do next? What do we expect from the executive branch of government? from the incoming legislators, from the opposition, from the Liberian people, the voters, and also the media. You know, what do we expect and what do we see coming? What are some of the changes that need to be made in all aspects of the Liberian society so that Liberia can be that country that we all dream of? And uh, who else can talk about this than the leader or the co-founder of one of the uh, most powerful pressure group in the diaspora, the movement to make Liberia better. And the co-founder is Mr. Chuchu Alice Jones. Mr. Jones, elections are over. Did your predictions come true? Well, my predictions are no, it did not. Um, my predictions did not come true, and I think we'll get into that a little bit. But I wasn't too concerned about the election. I think I made it very clear. I think uh, the movement to make Liberia better is very clear on our neutrality. Uh, all we, we are looking for is good leadership, uh, economic development, uh, social and economic opportunities for everybody. So we're not concerned with, you know, if Kennedy A wins or Kennedy B. As far as we're concerned, Liberia have uh, deep systemic problems. And unless you deal with those problems, no matter who leads or who wins an election or a seat, uh, it's, it's not going to be very uh, significant to the progress of the country. So I took the time off. Uh, as you can tell, I was, I'm in uh, Massachusetts with my family, so I did not follow the election. I did not have much uh, hope in any of the results. Again, you're just changing, you know, again, one bad apple to another. But we're going to that more. And like you said, now that election is ended, we can get back to the serious issues. We can talk about how we can uh, stop gender violence. We can talk about jobs. We can talk about the way forward, good individuals that can be identified that hopefully can show better leadership. That's what we are concerned with. That's what we've always been concerned with. Uh, so we're not the moya moya or, you know, the this person or the other person. We want to fix the country so that everybody can live there peacefully. Everyone can have an opportunity. Yeah. Good. And uh, before we get into today's, uh, anytime you look in Liberia, the expectation, the excitement for these elections can be so high. People are very hopeful. And sometimes I don't blame them because we, if you are in a hopeless situation, you know, they say when you are drowning, you can hang on anything. So they, they put a lot of hope and trust in the, res in the outcome of these elections. And you know, anytime I see that, even in my own county of Sino, all the way behind God's back where you have to walk for miles on foot to get to the nearest market to buy salt, people are dancing and they are sweating for someone to get to power, to get to uh, the Capitol building and begin to do whatever they, they can. But the excitement is so high. And I wonder if anything is going to change for these people. Well, Something can change for them, but uh, and I'm glad that we're having a show again. Thanks to focus on Liberia for you know, uh, looking beyond politics, uh, whether it's economics or 
It's about, you know, issues that relating to education, uh, civic education and, you know, health education. You guys champion it. You guys always bring guests beyond voting for Darius DeLon or voting for Joshua. So that's why I like this platform. And I think it's the best, most informative educational platform that there is in Liberian history. There's no other program that has such large, you know, educational material. Uh, and this dates back years. Uh, so, you know, keep up the good work. Some daily librarian people will see the value of education and knowledge, and they will they will they will uh, uh, appease themselves. So, <clears throat> will something change? Absolutely, uh, it can. But we have to do a better job. You know, most times we sit and we, we blame other people. We say, "Well, Josh Ria is bad," or. The opposition is bad, but we don't do enough as Liberians outside of America. Those of us who are privileged to get gotten some experience in our different uh, discipline, we sit back, you know, and we criticize, and we're not part of the process, and mm -hmm. we expect Liberia to fix itself and to not utilize the people who are involved. So that's one issue that Liberians, you know, everywhere should should take heed and they should be part of the process. Mm -hmm. It should be critical. And I believe myself, I mean, it was a few years ago when I made the conscious decision of doing something in Liberia, which is adding my voice to the conversation uh, or my criticism or my ideas. And I'm glad I did. When uh, we started, you know, a couple of years ago, how many people you know, like I said, nobody took us seriously. Nobody knew the impact of social media. Nobody knew the impact of, you know, coming out here and hundreds of people getting some kind of knowledge, whether it's economic knowledge or it's uh, health knowledge or gender, you know, abuse and things like that. So I'm glad I took that decision and many of us uh, who are doing it keep doing that. But uh, the future of Liberia lies with us. Yeah, and, and let's get to the future of Liberia. Let's start with uh, some, first of all, some say this these elections that that was a referendum on the current government, or um, because a highly contested seat of Monsterado and Basa were won by the uh, opposition. I, I don't know if you share that view or if it doesn't matter. Well, it, again, you know, if you look at the pattern, the pattern of Liberians and the way they vote, they are, they don't vote for someone; they vote against someone. Okay, the same very people who are today praising. Darius DeLong and the opposition where this, most of the same people who were praising George Weir or Ellen Johnson Salih or Samuel Doe. So that's a problem. That is a serious problem where every six years, and I can guarantee you, two years from now, these same people will be voting for against Darius DeLong or against, you know, whoever becomes, uh, uh, whoever those the people who were elected. So we're not voting for something. In other words, Liberians have nothing already. No, there's no idea, central idea. People vote for ideas. People vote for, you know, uh, uh, We are having some trouble with your connection there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are discussing Right after the, now the elections are over, what next? My guest is Choo Choo Alex Jones. He's joining us from the city of Worcester in Massachusetts. He is the co-founder of the movement to make Liberia better, MLB. And uh, we're gonna run through what changes are needed in the executive branch of government or in, uh, with the incoming legislators, opposition, what, what needs to change for us to have a better Liberia. Already, and uh, we have a, a pool online that says whether the elections just ended, whether they, go, they project a better image for Liberia. Is it, are we going to get something good from these elections? As a result of the elections of the December 8th election, would something good come out of those elections or those results for Liberia? That's the question we want you to answer, yes or no, and we're going to be coming to your, um, your result at the end of the program. Today, more election results were announced. We see that in Lofa County, Mr. Brownie Samukai, the former defense minister, has won as Brownie Jeffrey Samukai. So, Mr. 
June, let's go into it. Let's start with the executive branch of government. What's the way forward? What changes are needed, if any? And uh, what next for the executive branch of government? We can hear you, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Jones. Uh, hello? Okay, go, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. You're audible now. Okay, good. Sorry, sorry about the interruption. I mean, I have very little control over that. But uh, it's a question of survival. What do I mean by survival? It's not a question of whether or not Joshua wins another term in office or whether or not he survives. This is about uh, the, his entire life and legacy post-presidency. Okay? If things do not turn around in Liberia within the next year or two, Okay, the name Joshua will, will be an enigma. And anybody who's associated with, with the CDC or the government uh, will have no future in Liberia for a very long time. That's what you're fighting for at this point. You're not even fighting for re-election. Mm. You're fighting to be able to walk the streets of Liberia when you're not president. I mean, settle on that for a second. Liberian people are very patient. But history have taught us that when you've, you know, abused that power, you abuse that privilege, okay, they can turn on you. you. I mean, if you go back to the Taubos, right? And we don't even know where Taubos grave is today. If you go back to Mr. Samuel... Jones, Mr. Jones, those are violent. Those people, those are president you're talking about, the result was not pretty. That was violence. Yes, but but it was violent. perpetrated by the Liberian people. Okay. Those people also perpetrated violence on the people, whether economic violence or abuse. So in other words, you reap what you sow. So people can look at it like, all right, why, you know, whether it's coup d'etat or civil war happens. No, it happened because somebody did something to someone or someone's family, right? And at a certain point, even the great United States, they had those problems where People retaliate it. So what, what am I saying? Am I advocating that? No. But I'm saying that when you have the opportunity or when you are given the responsibility of people's lives and livelihood and you squander it and take it for granted, not only would they not want to see you, they will not want to see your children or your grandchildren. Hmm. Because what, what does this have to do with the outcome of the election? Well, it has to do with that the Liberian people have already shown that they will vote for anybody if they feel uh, 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 that they've been abused. Look at the candidates, uh, uh, the opposition candidates. You and I know that those are not candidates that have any kind of substantive policy. They did not have any ideas to live like grow out of poverty or to solve any problems. People are just voting against George Weah. In, in the case of uh, Lofa County, uh, Bani Samakai, yes, a man who was convicted, okay? Currently, he should be in jail. And I think from some of the indication, he's won the election in Lofa County. Yeah, he's won. Okay. So, Dan, tell me, there's a man who served in Ellen Johnson for 12 years as, I think, defense minister, Correct. Correct. Ellen Johnson was castigated. Ellen Johnson administration, one of the most corrupt administration. And today he's a hero. Today he's voted to be a senator at the highest level when the man is a convicted criminal. So that tells you Liberia, when they get sick and tired, mm -hmm. you know, they lose their cool and they will go after you and they would go after anything that you have. So that's what CDC and President George Rea has to look in the mirror, the twist, you know, they they are uh, what you call my girls. Don't look at when you're in power, look at when you leave power. You would just hear, I mean, uh, 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 God rest his peace, Jerry Rollins just, you know, pass. And you see the state funeral and you see the admiration and the love for a man like Jerry Rollins. Why? Because this man solved problems. This man took Ghana from being a poor, backward, country with no hope into the modern uh, into the modern uh, era so the question now becomes 
whether George Weah wins another six years, he has to leave someday. Yeah. What, what happens to him now at that point? That's yeah, that's what you specifically think. as a result of this election. What next for the government of George Weah? What can they do? What needs to change? Or can they continue on the same thing based on the result? No, obviously not. Uh, I think he has to completely change one of the one of the areas of uh, where I think he's struggling the most is economics. Okay, when uh, people when you don't solve the economic problem, every other problem will you know uh, as will be exacerbated. So in Liberia, unfortunately, all the governments and the same thing with uh, Elling, you know, they, they overlook the economy, which means the they, they, they ordinary people they didn't have jobs. They, they live in very, very horrible conditions. Extreme poverty. Like Brazil is one of the highest country extreme poverty. I think they're 40%. Okay. When an era when most countries, in fact, all over the world, most countries were improving from extreme poverty to poverty. What do I mean that? You mean people who don't have bare minimum. People who are just hopeless. That number is 40%, at least 40% in Liberia. When the Irish is around maybe 10% or in the world. The countries are in war that has a higher, you know, lower extreme poverty rate in Liberia. So he, he has to fix the economy. He has to provide jobs. That's 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 what he has to turn around. The people are voting because they don't have any means. They don't have any any opportunity. They don't have any economic, uh, uh, you know, position in the country. So if that doesn't change, then no matter what you do or say, everything else is irrelevant. How can he change that? Well, you have to have a plan. You got to have the right people in the right place, people who have the experience, they have the knowledge, uh, and people who are professionals. You know, the one area in any in all the countries around the world that people don't mess with, whether it's Nigeria or America or, or Botswana, the economy are always managed by professionals, not politicians. So if you look out, for instance, in the United States, you have what you call this, the, the, the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay? And you have the different districts of the Federal Reserve. That era, no matter who becomes president in America, all right, and the same thing is everywhere in, in Ghana, it's the same thing. They have a central bank in Nigeria, it's the same thing. You have that. They always find the best and the brightest central bankers to manage that. Whether it was Trump or is Obama <laughs> or whoever, that's the first job you you want you want to make sure that the people who are there, they are there because they are the best <laughs> amongst their peers. Well, look at our central bank today; it's a disaster. Look at the people who manage in the central bank. They, they brought this guy Lashers, who has no banking experience. He's a risk manager, some I think uh, low level guy. <laughs> have not really, you know, written a paper in economics. But he has not even published one paper in economics or in finance or on Liberia. And you take him and make him central bank governor. Mm. That's I, the problem. I'm not so when you have a lot of problem with a lot of people. So but do you have a list? Oh, we are we are losing you again. Do you have people if you say for instance the central bank governor, I know you have other people you you're not satisfied with, who, who do you have? Mr. Jones, you're, we are losing you now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a focus on Liberia. We are discussing the post-elections next steps. Now the elections are over. What next for the country? We are starting with the executive branch. And uh, my guest here is Chuchu Alice Jones. He's joining me from Worcester where he's uh, spending vacation. Uh, Chuchu is saying that uh, things need to change in the executive branch of government and starting with the economy. So we're going to have the number up shortly so that you will join the discussion. Uh, Mr. Jones' connection is having trouble for the second time. We are losing him. I hope he comes back. Right. So... Based on that, we're going to be taking some calls. We'll be taking calls. So please, uh, we have a few comments here that I want to read while we get our calls set up.
Sakpa Romeo say, who is responsible for your underdeveloped society? I think that's Liberia is talking about. ADDJ Blamco Kale. That is not true. Liberian has a true sense of idea, fixing the economy, getting rid of corruption and good governance. Eric J. P. Barry, is your guest lamenting his thoughts from a position of fast or is he simply being opinionated? Whatever views you have, keep them coming. We will read them and also take your calls. The number to call is on your screen. It's right there on the screen. Uh, call that number and participate in the discussion. Now the elections are over, we want to know what next. What are, what are the options here? And we're talking about the executive branch, the legislature, the opposition, the voters, and also the media. By the media, we're talking about the print and electronic media, the social media, talk show hosts, advocates, and everybody who's on it has some form of platform. What next? Please uh, call in and uh, participate. Jawin can we are say, unless our leaders recognize they are servants rather than seeming gods, we will continue to have the same problem. Uh, Vida Mania right, the international community are the most that is healing Madame Ellen Johnson Sally throughout the world. So people need to stop saying Liberians. So Liberians are not the one really, is the international community. Keep it set here and focus on Liberia. Uh, elections are over. You know, there was a lot of enthusiasm for people to come and vote for their leaders. Campaign slogans and they were dancing. There was much or rally in the street. Now the elections are over. What next? What do we expect to change for the ordinary people? What does the government need to do? What does the executive branch, the legislative branch, and also the judiciary need to do? The opposition, do they also have a role to play. How, starting with the collaborative political parties and other oppositions, also the Labyrinth voters, are we voting right? Are we voting for the right people? Are we you know, voting from our heads or from our bellies? We're gonna break all that down as soon as we have our guests back. But in the meantime, please uh, call in and interact. Let's discuss what needs to change Whatever side of the political divide you may come from, you have an opinion, please don't hesitate to share that as to what needs to change. Mr. Jones, are you back? Yeah. Like All right, so tell us, uh, what do you have when it comes to the changes that would, that needs to be made in terms of personnel? You already gave an example of the uh, bank governor. You say everybody there is what? You say a joke or something? Uh, we can hear you. Hello? Yeah, okay. Which... Can, you, can you hear me now? Okay, we can hear you. Okay, sorry about it. So I just moved position, so maybe it will be better. We won't have any interruption. Uh, okay. So at the bank, the central bank, not everybody the central bank needs to go or anybody, they don't have any expertise, but the leadership on the board of governors, okay? The people who make the economic policy decision, the people who regulate the banks in Liberia, is the board of governors, and the uh, the chairman of the board of the central bank of board of governors. These are not experts in banking. Now, one 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 individual on the bank came from uh, I think LPRC. LPRC have not put up a financial report since 2014. You go on the website. So when you have those kinds of you know, individuals who can barely, you can manage APRC and then now you're going to manage the whole entire country, uh, monetary policy, that's, that's a joke. So they need to make some serious changes to help the economy, starting at the central bank, uh, bringing in people, one with the clout, people with the depth in terms of finance, banking, business, because Liberia needs business in order to create jobs. And the central bank is the only entity in a country that is capable of producing economic growth through monetary policy, whether low interest rates or through you know, funding 
uh, commercial banks and, 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 and the likes. So, and the, and the people I see, they unfortunately just don't have that kind of uh, background. I will bring somebody who comes to mind like a, a Gompu, you know, Josh Gompu, PhD economics, um, one point a deputy finance minister on the Elling, resigned because he had high principal, um, currently uh, teaching banking. So somebody like that would know how to recruit and how to bring in the right people to create your different you know, monetary policy and financial policy, uh, regulatory policy and so forth. Uh, for even not him, and I will also, uh, one, one of the things I will, I will be laying out is that they need to look outside of the CDC. Look, Joshua is president for Liberia. You already won the election. It doesn't matter whether someone comes from the Liberty Party to make the economy stronger or they come from CDC to make the, 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 uh, the economy stronger. The fact is, if the economy is strong, you've done your job, no matter who you use. Cummings, Alexander Cummings, could make an excellent central bank governor, okay? Um, Alexander Cummings, at one point, was a chief financial officer at Pittsburgh. That's a more top than another company. Uh, someone with that kind of financial background uh, and also administrative background could be very effective. Plus, he's from the opposition. So therefore, you bring some kind of, you know, coordination between uh, the, 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 the opposition, you bring in someone with the skills, someone with the internet, both of these guys now, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's Dr. Kompu or Alexander Cummings, who make an excellent central bank governor. Right. So, Mr. Now, Mr. Is this wishful thinking or is this something that you think the government is capable of doing? Can the government of Mr. Weir make those kind of changes? Oh, absolutely. And I think he will. He doesn't have a choice. Because like I said, with all the economy being fixed, it's done. It's a sitting duck. Every program you talked about in Liberia, how are you going to fund it? If you want to continue building roads, Liberia has almost a $1.5 billion debt, which you have to finance, okay? The, the economy is negative 2.5%, 2, 2 okay? Inflation is 17%. How are you going to carry on any programs? Because we're going to go to the programs, the educational program. We're going to go to the... Uh, the health programs, how are you going to fund it if you don't have a good central, if the country does not grow? How is the country going to grow with 70% uh, uh, inflation? I mean, that means 24% inflation rate, 17% uh, interest rate. Well, Mr. Jones, these things don't, they didn't start after the election, right? So if, if they were not fixed then, what makes you think you can do it now? Well, no country or every country goes through the same problem, economic problem. I mean, Great Britain in the 70s had bankruptcy, you know. America had uh, recessions, you know, in from 1929 uh, to 1944. Uh, that's a the Great Recession uh, Depression in America. So what, what fixed the American problem? They brought in capable bankers, managers, and they had policies. That where you got your social security, where you got your the SEC, your security exchanges, you brought in uh, 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 educational program, loans, grants. So uh, even uh, development programs, the uh, uh, highway, the dam. Mm -hmm. So every country, right, is faced with the same issues Liberia is faced with. The only difference between a Botswana and a Liberia, right, or a Seychelles and Liberia, Seychelles has good economic policymaker regardless of who's president. And the problem with Liberia is whoever becomes president puts his friend or puts his partisan there when a partisan don't know anything like myself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you bring professionals to handle the professional part and then you keep your partisan in your, you know, in those positions where, you know, like in America, you can give a certain amount to a campaign and you can become an ambassador. Ambassador doesn't run the economy. Ambassador doesn't have any kind of serious you know, you go to function, you go to boss, and you, you know, you represent the government. So you give money, you get a job. So partisan, that's the jobs you get. You get become ambassador, you become advisor, you sit on boards, and you still get your ten thousand dollars a month. Mm. But when it comes to the economy, you need to bring the best you can have in the country. And these are two people. I don't know anybody who would disagree with me in the era of financial management. Mm. Uh, those two people are some of the best Liberia can offer. I mean, you go add to that list, uh, 
Anthony Asaye, but Anthony Asaye is, is deputy and uh, managing director. I don't think she's going to leave that job to become central bank governor Liberia. That would be a step down. Hmm. So let's, go the, let's go to the incoming legislators and see what we expect, what changes to, to, to help us to drive things in the country. Okay. So, so you name that you have a better, you know, knowledge of them. What, what I mean, uh, what, the House as a whole, or the uh, the Congress, or the Capitol building, the senators and the representatives, do we expect anything to change that? If yes, what? I don't, because the people you have there, you have, okay, somebody like Edwin Stone. How long Edwin Stone has been representative in Africa? You want one point speaker. Yeah. At least 10 years. Where Edwin Stone did not do in the last 10 years, where it's going to change in his brain, or what so much is going to, what capability he lacks, or knowledge he lacks, he's not going to get that in the next two years. If he was not able to carry on legislation, able to motivate his partisans or his uh, or colleagues, so, you know, if he didn't have the leadership skill 10 years ago, he's not going to have it tomorrow. So you can go down the list of the people in the House of Representatives. Kanga Lawrence, okay, what, what, what's her background and what's her strength and skill? Other than people voting for you. I mean, people voted for Trump. People voted for Prince Johnson. Voters will vote for anybody. That doesn't make you qualify. That doesn't give you the experience, you know, or the capability. So in a legislator in the House, in the Senate, who in the legislators can you tell me have started a company in Liberia, ran a company, hiring people, have put up a... These people can't even write a freaking, you know, but what I would say, a, a research paper and publish it on anything in Liberia. I have yet to see a legislator in Liberia write an intellectual article in a journal. But, but what, what does a legislator have to do with intellectual article? Because it, does, it, legislation, legislation has to do with uh, a knowledge of something. And if you can't, if you're not knowledgeable, what is education or is healthcare or is development or is unemployment, if you're not knowledgeable enough, enough to express it, then how will you be knowledge, knowledgeable enough to, to, to create a law and to sell that law to, to, to people? You see what I mean? So it comes with knowledge. You don't, you don't take people, substandard, you know, people uh, and put them to make good laws or to govern, you take the best. So there's nobody, and I, I stand corrected, I, whoever thinks there's someone there who who tomorrow they left, left the House of Representatives, right? The IMF will be calling them, you know, uh, or the, uh, what do you call, J.P. Morgan will be calling them to work. If they leave the House of Representatives, no longer they fight to the death to maintain those positions because that's all they can be in life. They can't start a business or run a business. Hmm. They, they're not going to get a job anywhere in America or in, in, in any African country. So Ali, let, let's, 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 get, let's talk to, uh, let's put it in context. Okay. In Lofa County, Brandon Samuka won. In Bapolo, uh, Boto Kane. In Cape Mount, Simeon Boyman Taylor. In Bombay, Edwin Snow. Mosorado, Darius Delon. Mangibi. Mag the former speaker, Jeremiah Nukwe, Bon County, Prince Moi, Nimba County uh, is almost settled that it's going to be Jeremiah Cohn, the uh, current, the incumbent representative, Grand Jude, Zoe Peno, representative, uh, Sando County, Augustine Chia, River J, Jennington Borchow Sigway, uh, and the list goes on. Are you telling me with all these incoming senators, including the light, A.B. Darius Delon, you said nobody is going to make any change? Maybe that's the day happening. I don't, I don't even know them. And for, for good reason. Because I don't know. Uh, excuse me? Population. I say half of the people you name, I don't know anything about them except for they being a party, part of a party. I don't know there are any other accomplishments. Okay, boy, Charles, Jonathan. Right, but a uh, boy Charles, who, who one time was a football player, did well internationally, right? That's what he's known for. Okay, so how is that going to resonate now to become someone who's going to carry on development project, who's going to find the funding for it, who's going to create past laws to create jobs, who's going to go internationally and help help negotiate with, with, with companies to start manufacturing in Liberia? 
That's what these people are gonna do. That's a joke. These are not people that have those skills. So that's the problem Liberia have. You have you have nothing for politicians. You don't have any, you know, you don't have professional people. You, you know, in every other country, the way it works is you go into the world, you do great things. Whether you become a, you know, a, a entrepreneur, you are a business manager, then when you leave it, then you go into the in, 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 in the politics, right? Most most politicians, that's where you come from, you know. So you come with something. In Liberia, it's, it's the opposite around. You start in politics and you stay in politics. So you don't have any skills. You, you know, who, who's gonna hire you if you're not elected? And what are gonna hire you? What can you do? You're not an accountant. Okay, you're not an analyst, you're not an economist. Okay, so where are they gonna hire you? You're not worth in the market $10 an hour. So in Liberia, you get $15,000 for doing, to become a senator or representative, but on the market, if you want to get a job, if, if you came to any country to say, I wanna work, you're not worth $10 an hour. That's the situation in Liberia. That's why Liberia is poor. So I don't indicate where you need who won the election. Like I said, anybody can win election in these in these fragile economies, in these in these places where you don't even have we have real democracy. Like Bureau has what you call, you know, a, a hybrid, hybrid system. It's not even a democracy, according to the index, the the the, 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 the world, uh, democratic index, We're not even qualified to be a democracy. Let so anybody can win. Let me read some or uh, typically what a legislator would do, right? develop bills, draft of laws that they want their fellow legislators to approve, they draft or approve policies, budgets, and programs, they debate and analyze the impact of uh, proposed laws, they vote on bills and on motions to add them into law, they collaborate and negotiate with other legislators to resolve differences and reach agreements, they seek funding for projects and programs in their districts, they appoint nominees or to leadership post or approve appointees by the, uh, the president. They uh, serve on committees, panels, and study group for special policy issue. They listen to and address panels uh, or, and address concern of the people they represent, of course. And uh, they invite and listen to testimony from people who are concerned about an issue likely to be affected by a law if they pass it. Those are some of the things, you know, in Liberia, we put them in three broad categories. We say they represent, they um, have oversight and also serve as check and balance on the other branch of government. With all those things named, you, you, you telling me that our senators and representatives don't have the skills? I mean, why would Let's you say talk that? about negotiation skills. You know what it takes for someone to be a negotiator uh, or an expert in negotiation? It takes years of training and expertise and knowledge, okay? If somebody becomes legislator, now they have to negotiate between the government, let's say you're the opposition. You have to negotiate a bill where you have to go to the central bank and say, look, we need uh, to borrow money for our uh, uh, hydropower in our county. Yes, how are we going to pay you back? Yes, the, yes, the economic report on why we need the money. You need skills to do that. You can't just get up one day and become a legislator and put a proposal together that debt, right? You need to know what a return on investment. You'd be able to, be able to sit down and convince experts, right? People like myself, I ask you that question, okay, what's your rate of return? You know, what's the growth rate in your county? You can't answer it. Why, if I'm on the bank and on the panel, why would I approve that loan for your county? So if you don't have those skills, right? Unfortunately, you are not going to be able to do any of those things that you Passing law. Passing law means you got to be thoughtful. Right. You can't just pass a law and say, don't cross this rule. Or that's why in Liberia, most of our laws are not thoughtful because we don't ask the question, if this doesn't happen, then what? Mm -hmm. So you give the president all the power. So what if the president abuses the power? Then you wait for six years. The damage that's going to be done in six years, you know, I mean, people's lives are going to be lost. Billions of dollars in the economy are going to be destroyed. So to make laws, you have to be thoughtful, you have to be wise, you have to be the best. Lawyers, you know, basically most of the lawmakers are lawyers and then they are excellent lawyers, legal yeah. experts. We, we have we have lawyers too. We have lawyers like uh, Barney Shimmer. 
Yeah, and and, and, and we also have and Vani Shema is why also not banned for coming to America for corruption. Also mm -hmm. being being you know he's good. Vani Shema is excellent, but excellent in doing what corruption. So not only do you have to have people who are smart, you don't want to have criminals. Criminals are brilliant people, but what they break the law. They, they you know they they are. Uh, Depend the system. And, and where I think you're making a point is uh, when it comes to like one of the things that is very uh, happen all the time in the Senate, for instance, budget and confirmation hearings. Right. I, I think when it comes to the budget, uh, I, most of the time our senators are not are not doing so well. They don't know how to read the budget. These people don't know the different the asset or the equity on a balance sheet. And you, yeah, the senator comes in front of that, right, and tells you, oh. We're going to do harmonization, and that's going to fix the economy. And their mouths are open because they don't understand simple basic economics. They don't understand simple basic finance. They don't even know what the growth rate is in, in but, the sub region. That's, that's why you have your. That's why they have their staff. And who are their staff? Who, who name one legislative staff here that been on your show that you're impressed with that you can say that this man is a is a policy maker or this man is an expert? Darius Delon was was a staff to Edwin Snow, okay? What did Edwin Snow produce in the entire time? He was his chief of staff in Liberia. The Liberia improved. He was Speaker of the House or Speaker of the House. He was so bad that something which don't normally happen in Liberia did happen. They pitched him as a Speaker. Who was his staff? Your, your light, your ADD was his chief of staff. So those staff, most of Universal Bureau can be a great school, and we'll go into that. But they don't have the material to prepare the students. They don't have the practical application. They don't have the updates in the different fields of study, accounting, finance, you know, uh, development. They don't have it. So they're limited. I sat in New York City, one with somebody who claimed to be, I think, the, 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 the deputy foreign minister for, 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 foreign, for Liberia. For economic affair, and that man didn't know the, the, what, what the Wall Street Journal was. The Wall Street Journal, he didn't know. He claimed he had a master's degree from my bureau. Well, what was he? He, he, he said he was well, here for a meeting. He was here for a meeting at some meeting for donor meeting or something, and we're talking about something mentioned in the Wall Street Journal, and he was asking, "What is the Wall Street?" Journal? He, he thought that was a, the name of a car, or what? there you go. So I'm just saying, and that's not his fault. But but, uh, but but Mr. Mr. Uh, Jones, what Lucina Lucina Co is saying here is uh, people vote these people to power. He said Labrin problem is is us. We vote people on popularity, not knowledge. So what you are saying, Lucina is is uh, saying, well, don't blame them, blame the voters. No, I blame the press. I blame the educator. I blame the civil groups. So so let, that, 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 that take us to the voters. What should the voters be doing? The voters, the voters are only get, going to get information from the media. If you go and parade Darius DeLong around the place as the most genius in Liberia, if you go on Spoon TV and you go on Henry Costa show and, you, and everybody, Liberian people going to say, wow, we have a genius here. This man going to make good laws. So the media is responsible. The educators are responsible. The civil, civic groups are responsible. Part of the reason why we don't participate in any of the nonsense politics is because we want to make sure that Liberian people hear some of these things from somewhere. And, and you can hold us. For instance, when they are doing the state of emergency in Liberia, when the people's rights were violated, I was the only one who were out here and saying the president does not have a right to abuse people, even under civil, uh, what you call uh, State of emergency. Emergency. Mm -hmm. What did everybody say? You guys were here greeting me. But in other countries, whether it's any other place, if a president abuses the law, they won't allow it under any condition. So again, that's what the political leaders should have been doing. That's what the newspaper should have been doing, be writing these stories. But they said they promote these people, right? Then when the people vote for these people, they, they promote their George Weah. Did they not? The newspapers in Liberia, the talk shows in Liberia. So I don't blame George Weah much because, like I said, the same educated people today who thought they were going to get positions and enrich themselves, the same Henry Costas, they were the ones who were promulgating George Weah to be the savior. 
that this man could walk on water. I didn't vote for him. I wouldn't support him. I didn't write any papers uh, in his defense. So the media is responsible, not the people. Now they're doing the same thing again. They look at the opposition, Brandon Samakai and uh, uh, Boyka as the people who can solve Liberian problem. We've been down this road before. Remember, Ellie? We've been down the road before. Somebody come, you don't ask them any question, you don't scrutinize them, you don't see where the policies are, you don't see where the accomplishments in Liberia, where programs, you jump out and say the person is the best president. We even passed this election yet on a unity party already finding vice president for Joseph Barker. So automatically, in the, the whole purpose here, and then you got nonsense media people in Liberia already now start propagating it. Then when the people go and vote for him, yes, what you but, expect? But Alex, this is the same everywhere. I mean, you don't get the media, you have different, you know, point of view. Here in America, if you go to Fox News, you're going to hear something else. If you go to CNN, you're going to hear something else. If you go to Newsmax or you go to uh, uh, or Al Jazeera or you go to MSNBC or Rod Limboy, he propagates his message. So it's, it's like this everywhere. Yeah. So it's level well, every, with an informed citizenry to be able to make the right decision and vote. You know, but you see, the difference in, the, in, in, in developed countries or developing countries, like I'm not going to go to Western countries, but let's look at some countries which mm -hmm. Liberia can compare themselves with. Let's look at a country like Costa Rica. Okay? Costa Rica is a modern democracy, strong economy, right? High living standard, you know, good educational system. It wasn't always that way. Good schools, universities, even companies in America go to Costa Rica and open businesses there. I'm not talking about factories. The, our work at Citibank, we have about at least 10% of our staff in Costa Rica because the people, university, were putting up students comparable to the US. So the new data analysis, programming, and all these different things. So look at Botswana. Okay, Botswana can compete with just about any country in the world. Okay, the, the Botswana is, is, is shipping uh, beef to Europe. Okay, they rank higher uh, uh, in lack of, in, on, the, on the corruption index than South Korea. Okay, so I'm just saying these countries are in Africa. Let's look at Seychelles. Let's look at Mauritius. Okay, these countries have more than just one media. The problem in Liberia is all our media have issues because the only thing they focus on is election. You can't even get a good editorial board. If you go and ask, what's your editorial board? The people that come together to decide what story you put out. Some don't even have it, but it, you call yourself media. So I can wake up in the morning and say, okay, well, Darius the law is the most popular person in Liberia. And people read those things and people carry those things out. That's how the, 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 the country, the people get misinformed. You, but, you, you keep referring to Darius Dillon. What is the problem you have with him? Is he not qualified to be a senator? No, he's not. No, he's not. And it's unfortunate that with all of the knowledge of people in Liberia and all of the good people in Liberia, you take one of the worst person. This man promulgated people like uh, uh, Joel Howard Taylor, another disastrous person in Liberia who is responsible for most of the problems we have in Liberia today, okay? That was who he promoted. And because you want to get George Ria out so much, you see what had George, uh, 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 anyone to get George out so much, you went and told Charles Taylor, right, to come in and cause destruction. Let us sit down and think like wise people. We've been down this road before. Darius Delon does not have a simple policy. If I ask you today what committee he served on, what was his what was his performance in the last two years? Whether it was education, or it was health, or it was the economy, you listed the things that a senator should do. Okay, what is his what are his ideas to solve problems in Liberia? He does not have the aptitude to do to say that he cannot barely express himself. So no, he goes no, on. No, 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 no. Uh, that Dylan articulates very well. He has, so he has been working in the um, on Capitol building. He's very knowledgeable about the Constitution, and from what I see, he he he, he talk a lot of sense when when he he, he appears on the radio. Give me an example of one thing that Darius Dillon has said. 
Well, you know and, and most of the time, even when he makes a mistake, he's uh, humble enough to come back yeah. and say, hey, I have earned. Okay, so, so the man would say who walks around with rocks to stone the president as a recourse, that's the man who you're seeing now. He, is recounted, a he recounted that statement. Yeah, but that's the problem, that he's learning on the job. Because that's something that any intellectual person would know that this is not, it's, it's not sensible. You, you know, an 18 year old would know that. Not the man who you expect now to solve your economic problem, your social problem, your own employment problem, all of that. But his solution is we'll take rock and we'll throw the president back. Or I will join Henry Costa so we can burn tires in, 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 in Morovia. You know? Or what is his policy? Mr. Jones, you're making this hopeless now. You're telling me that there is nobody in the entire or 30 senators and almost 100 representatives. Everybody's just bad? Yes. And I challenge anyone to debate that. Let us show me the senator in Liberia that has been able to put forward legislation on the issues in the country, has been able to discuss the issues in the country. We have a, we have a currency problem in Liberia. We have a health crisis in Liberia. Show me the legislator in Liberia that has been able to come up with a three or four prompt solution on solving those problems. Could that be their role though? You just mentioned what the role of a legislator is to make laws, is to, is to laws, is to advocate for resources to solve problems in a district. In the legislator or the senator in Liberia, that have, that's a challenge to anyone who's listening that has been able to even write out a simple plan on solving one problem in Liberia or has solved one problem in Liberia. I would sit down and wait for that person. Uh, when we're talking about the media, uh, Vidya Wright wrote, Brother Alex, may I ask you, video is circulating that the ruling government of Liberia has been paying all talk show hosts, is it all talk show hosts and hostesses on their different platform on Facebook that have been supporting and speaking on behalf of the president and his government, 18,000 in the diaspora, that's $18,000. I know that you support a very strong voice of the president, what is your view on that? When you speak of some of the issues wrong in Liberia, I think a video is saying there's a, there's a information that the government has sent 18,000 to support those who are promulgating pro-government or policies and information mm -hmm. and or propaganda. So, and she think that you align with the government. So what's your view on that? Okay, first and foremost, I'm not. And I respect her question. And that's a good question. No, I'm not. And two, eighteen thousand dollars for me to propagate for the government would be selling myself cheap. Okay. So if I if I were to consult the government or work for the government in this in this capacity, I would not take eighteen thousand dollars. I would take more than that because the, I, I worth more than that. Okay. So um, now let me answer the question. So I declare that part of it. I don't know about it. Uh, I've never sat in a discussion with anybody in the government or anybody who is uh, affiliated with the CDC. Uh, I do uh, produce a show for DJ Finance, who happens to be a CDC. And uh, that's my extent of my you know, relationship with the government. My views have always been independent. I've criticized the government. I've written about the government. I've written about you know, all, the, all the major players in Liberia. Uh, so uh, as far as the government paying people to promulgate the idea, that's what they should be doing. What's wrong with that? Okay, what's wrong with that? You know, political season, you need to get your message out. You need to pay for people to get your message out. The Democratic Party don't pay or consultants and spokespeople around to, to get the message out. So why should they be ashamed of it? I'm just saying, I, I would think that money is too small. That first of all, you know, I would think that you should be, the reason why you got the result you got is because you're paying, you know, people who basically, <laughs> you know, they, they're not the best in the, in, the, in the business. But if you pay the right people like Ellie, how much Ellie were paying Washington consultants millions of dollars to promote her government? So that's what Joshua should be doing. He should hire the best people, the best uh, uh, media people, consultants. You should pay them very well. They should help him adapt policy, help him with his message, because he has a responsibility to govern. 
And you can't govern if your message is distorted. You can't govern if you if you don't have a clear message. Well, so you're telling me uh, Eugene Fagon and uh, and all these people did not put out the right message. But let's go to uh, our phone lines very quickly because people are waiting. But uh, let's touch on the uh, opposition because everybody has a role. You said, yeah, as the wave power. What changes are needed? Let me. See if uh, we get, okay, let me get some colors on the line first and we can uh, we can go to the opposition. Want, also. I wanted to give a few names that I want to recommend publicly here that I think that should come into the government uh, in the base. Like I said, I think Cummings should come do, do, here. Do, do that in two minutes and then I can bring no, you. In the chart. Uh, Jackie Sig Sigwich, uh, I think she should be Minister of Education. I think she's a very brilliant woman. Your voice board. is is, fi is feeling. Okay, can you hear me? Is it better? Yeah, it's better. Okay, so Jackie Sigwish. Um, is it Sire? No, not Sire. Jackie Sire. Is that you pronounce the last name? S a y e g h. Yeah, that's that's uh the my co host on uh. Yeah, co host. Okay, I follow her. You said Minister of Education. Minister of Education. I think uh, Joshua should bring her in. Jackie, you got a job yet? <laughs> Go ahead. I think she's articulate. Uh, I think she's brilliant. And I think you need people like her who can communicate very effectively uh, and who has no real bias on any party. And any of, you know, it shows that one, you are looking beyond just your party saying you get great results. Uh, I think Dwalu, um, Ansu Dwalu, I think uh, should be the finance minister. I think that's, he's a that's, that's, that's your friend. Is it favoritism? Well, Yes, it is because I know him. I've worked with him. I know his credibility. I know his capability. Uh, and he's, a, you know, I mean, financial wizard. So I think he should be the finance minister. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, uh, Tavina Ko should be the new general minister. Tavina Ko. Yeah, she should be the new general. George Rashford hires the general minister. I think Jerome Bradia should be the anti-corruption co commission. And I would list as we go on, but I want to stop yeah. with the and Cummings should be the uh, central bank governor. All right, let me bring in my first caller. That's uh, Abraham Kale. Abraham from Minnesota, I guess. You are live on Focus on Liberia. Your question or comment? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, hello? Hello? Okay, yes, yeah, so uh, I'm, uh, I, I listened to your, uh, your guest. I think he's he making a serious point. All of the Can points you give a little volume? Okay, hold on, hold on, yeah, hold, on hold on one second. Okay. Hold on one second. All right, we're good. Go ahead. Okay. Can you hear me now? I, yes, sir. Okay, so uh, uh, what, what I was saying, I say, your guest is making a very good point. All, all of his points are worth taking. But the problem is right now, in the country, those people who have been like that, those are the people we have. Those are the only people we have. And besides, those are the individuals who are very much great enough to put their name forward to come and talk on the issues of the people. All right, you know, Liberia is, is, is a third, third world country. We understand that when people get into this kind of complicated issue, especially in politics, their lives are on the line. Okay, let's say that uh, for me, all right, I am a robotic engineer, all right. I live in America. I, I mean, I have been out, out of Liberia for probably maybe close to 16, 17 years. All right. There are doctors, there are lawyers, there are good professionals who are also been out, out of that country for a long time. To bring those people in, you need good pay. They need very much good pay. You have to be paid a whole lot. And so with the point your, your guest is making, I think he's making a point to overemphasizing that things that need to be done, I mean, cannot be done right now. So what we have to do is work with the people that are there right now who are pushing the message, who are saying the real message. For example, he says Delon is not a good representative of the people. That's not true. Delon is pushing the issues of the people. Corruption, all right, good governance, you know, or fair play. Delon wants to see these things. And these are the things Democratic call for. There's nobody in the world who will be pushing these things who you say they are bad for 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 uh, governance. That's wrong. 
I mean, I think he should be on the side of the loan, of what the loan is doing. He should be supporting the loan. He should be able to say, you know what happened? If we have three, four, five person that belong within the Senate and in the legislature, things might go better from now on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, jot that down. Let me go to my next caller who's calling from, who has a New Jersey number 609. Caller with the New Jersey number 609. Your name and where are you calling from? Yes. My name is um, Jeremy Matthew Gono. I'm calling from Sacramento, New Jersey. Jeremy, welcome. Matthew Gono. Oh, Jeremy Matthew Gono. Go ahead, your question or yes. comment. Well, um, I just like to support what you know Alex had said, and most of uh, the foundation what he said, you know, were based on skills and qualification and knowledge, and that's what we lack in Liberia. Um, and so most of his points, if not all, were very very good. But I like to make a comment. We cannot, no matter how great and experienced and knowledgeable we are, we cannot build Liberia when we do not tackle corruption from top to bottom. Mm. Corruption has, has, has been in Liberia even before I was born 100 years ago, mm. and it continues. Corruption has become you know, a way of life in Liberia. How can we fight corruption? in my opinion, is, first of all, to see about the salary discrepancies in Liberia, salary disparity in Liberia from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. Give our soldiers, give our police, our nurses, our doctors, our professors, give them good pay and reduce the pay of the president, reduce the salary of the legislators, you know, who most of them are doing nothing, like mm -hmm. Alice, Alice lamented. Now, if you pay our workforce with a just pay, then you can tackle corruption. For example, if you pay a policeman, you know, good salary, he will be warned or told not to take money or bribe from, mm. you know, from drivers and stuff like that. If he does, he will be dismissed and never be reemployed in any part of the Republic of Liberia. If an instructor is caught taking money you know, from students or having sex with students in the school, he should be dismissed forever in Liberia. I mean, these are some of the ways that we can fight corruption in Liberia. If you want to carry investors in Liberia, my brother, if, if you, you have to bribe, you have to bribe. If you send your cars to the, to the free port, you have to pay more than what you even purchase the car in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So corruption is a very serious thing in Liberia, and we must be able to constitute economic crime code to try people would be corrupt officials or even the private sector, you know, as well. If if these things are done, I believe that we can be we will be able to achieve, you know, a lot of things that will bring back, you know, Liberia to its, you know, to to, to what it used to be prior to the civil war that devastated every fabric of our society. Thank Corruption you. is very serious and we Thank must constitute economic crimes court in order to Thank fight you, crimes and stuff like that. Thank you, Jeremy. We have a long list of callers here, so we want to be very brief. At least a minute or a minute and a half should be okay. Alex, let me take one more oh, call. Okay, and then okay. You Thank, can, you. Can Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Let me go to Adam Stevens. Yes, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for accepting my call. Uh, I'd like to note that uh, the guest on your show tonight has uh, made some very good points. But I'm taking that back uh, of his uh, uh, rather condescending approach towards Mr. Dillon. I think Mr. Dillon has, in fact, propagated Propagated significant amounts of uh, significant amount of uh, of uh, policy edict that 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 that, uh, that is in fact 
tearing the country in the direct in the correct in the correct direction. Mm-hmm. For example, it should be noted that uh, Mr. Dillon has uh, propagated the uh, the uh, working on 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 working on uh, establishing a a policy edit on a, uh, some sort of a policy direction for the Zogos. Uh, Mr. Dillon has propagated and, uh, in fact, implement. I beg your pardon? I said, what specifically for the Zogos, you say? Well, he, he propagated, uh, he propagated establishing some sort of, uh, some sort of, uh, uh, uh mechanism to remove Zogos from the street okay. and begin to train them to be, uh, productive citizens. He propagated the reduction of pay within the within the the legislators, and uh, I like to end by saying that one of our major problems in the country is we don't have a merit system. Right. Uh, qualified people in 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 uh, in the in the in the various government apparatus that should be civil servants, not being allowed to participate in the government as civil servants. So maybe I think we need to begin to educate our people, educate the population, and curtail, curtail the uh, curtail the power of the presidency yeah. to allow us to develop a merit system in the country uh, that will allow our country now to begin to evolve. Absent that, the country is going to continue to regret as as it Fair has point. over the last three years. Thank you. Yeah. Good point. But before I let you go, I know uh, Delon talked about the, uh, re- the starting a rehabilitation center for the uh, less uh, fortunate or the Zogos. But I- I'm not sure if that's uh, into law or policy or is something that uh, is just an aspiration. I- if you know, do, do you know? No, I know it's an evolving thought. It's an evolving thing that's going to be oh, pushed okay. during this, this, this full term in okay. the Senate. I know yeah, that for a fact because I, in fact, donated to the Dillon campaign uh, significantly. Right. Th- thank you. I just wanted to make sure that uh, it's something that is not just talk, but something he's doing. Let me alight there. Let me go to Oliver. Oliver, you're live. How you doing? Thank you for having How you doing? Thank you for having me, Mr. Thank Jones. You. Your, your points are very in, in line, and I really admire you. Uh, I used to listen to your punk, uh, your story be- before you had your own podcast where focus on our focus on Liberia, where you were participating to be a host, to be a co-host. But however, the problem, like everything you said is kind of in line, but is it that the whole situation, are we blaming the George We Are government after three years of not making progress after all the other government has tarnished and destroyed Liberia progress or economic system? And the last time, Sunday, Sunday story, Mr. Enesja, I really admire the story yes, when you go on Sunday because Mr. Joko came out to and set up with Mr. Cooney. They set up every point of why is it that Liberians are suffering today. Okay. And Ms. Jones came out and said out and said out all the other things that happened in politics. And don't get me wrong. I may not know any politician who knows what is the change in all the progress and this, that. And then, Mr. Jones, I think we need to have a legislature that can pass that. Every economy has to go on the same election so we can find a competent economist in order to improve Liberia. Mm. So yeah. I don't know. Is it where we are government after three years that are causing a problem or this problem has been exist all along? Yeah. Thank you for yeah. having me. Th- thank you. My, my, uh, let me take Someone from United Airlines, uh, 704, oh, okay, 704 Iroko, you're alive, you're next. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for allowing on the program, Mr. Dennis Jar. And also, let me say thanks to thanks to uh, the, the, uh, the, the guy in studio, Mr. Alex Jones. Um. I think the issue that we are faced with, I'm Mark Nimne, my name is Mark Nimne, and I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, Mark, go ahead. 
All right. I, I was saying that the the issue that we have uh, has not been the issue of education. Education has not been the problem in our country. We have had so many educated people, even government before the CDC-led government. Um, but the issue we have had is the issue of dishonesty in our country. Mm. Now, I can set a, an example. During the Edinburgh government, we had a minister of the gospel in presence of uh, 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 Lawrence Komna Brople, who, who, who served in a capacity as uh, information minister. Yeah. Now, it's a man that is educated. What happened in, the, in, the, in, 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 in his, 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 his uh, performance or his duty? There was an issue of $72,000 corruption that he got fired from his position. So there are so many people, there are so many people that are educated. That's why I had a quote on my page, and that quote was derived by myself. I said that anybody who is educated and lack honesty should never be referenced in our society. So let, let, let look at the finance minister. I know there are two issues. The issue of his ability to perform his duty, you know, as, as, as giving his tax, and also the issue of corruption. The issue of, 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 of using 25, 000, I mean $25 million in a mob exercise was not the issue of uh, what you call it, uh, his skills and performance. It's just a clear thing. The money was not put in the, in, in, in the uh, what you call it, uh, in the system. The okay. money was misused. So our issue is not the issue of ed education. It's the issue of dishonesty. You can take as many people you want to take to Liberia, but are they honest? I am not against education. I support education in any capacity, but our problem has always been dishonesty. So we need to, to like you said, we need to use this uh, uh, service group and other organizations to propagate the issue of honesty. Thank you, Mark. I mean, dishonesty has become the issue of yastic in Liberia. Even the Ma children who are growing, Ma the little ones, they are corrupt. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, Ma thank you very much. Thank you. That's that's well. Thank you. All right, Alex, your response. Then we. You come closer again. Your your voice is. Is it, is it better? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so thank you for the question. So let me go with the last one with this understanding education and we'll, we'll work out the way back. So uh, I disagree with the fact that you need honest people in government. I don't think there's honest people anywhere in the world. What you need is you need check and balance, right? You need um, a system, a legal system that prosecute people, right, who break the law. The people in Liberia are now more dishonored than the people in Great Britain or the people in France or the people in America. That's a mistake that Great people make. The only difference, if you're in Botswana and you, you took a dollar, you're going to pay the price. In Liberia, if you take a million dollars and you know the political leader or that your party, nobody will say anything about it. And where does that dishonesty start from? Do you think it starts in the presidency? I bet you not. It starts in your political party. How some of these people became political leaders? Did they go through a scrutiny process, a fair process, where you selected the best person, whether it was your friend or you like them? No. These people get together and they form their party for their friends and themselves. They make one of them the stand-up bearer or the political leader, and then that same party now over time, right, go out there and win elections and take the job and give it to their friends, and then you complain. So we don't even have political parties in Liberia. What we have is a gang of people fighting for power. Because our true political party should have primaries. Our true political parties is supposed to go out there and look for good candidates. So if Deja or Dennis Ja is a good person, then you the party should go and say, okay, let's bring him in. If Alice Jones is a good person, let's bring Alice Jones in. But go to your very unity party. Who was the chairman for the United Party? Ben Sandy. Who was Ben Sandy? Ben Sandy was the same one, okay, with, with, with that was the only political party that when, it, when the international community gave money to the Liberian government to, to create businesses, it was called the small and medium-sized enterprises. $545,000 
was embezzled. That went to people in the unity party, people who did not have any business. Fortunately, Ben Savvy personally collected $45,000 for which to this day he has never paid. He was the chairman for Dara Zillon party. So you're like that. Did you, did you hear Dara Zillon ever saying, Mr. Sanvi, this is wrong. I cannot align myself with you. No, that's his body. Dara Zillon became president tomorrow. Ben Sanvi will be another FPRC director. Then you will be here crying and your people will be back there suffering. So the party corruption in Liberia does not begin when you become president. It starts first in your civic organization. I mentioned a name here, Dwalu. I did not know Ansu Dwalu from anywhere. I never met me met him in my life. When one policy we have in our organization is you can only stay in a position for three months. Okay? And before we bring someone, we go to a vetting process. We look around and we find people who have written articles, people who are involved in Liberia, and people who have the credential. That's how his name came up. And when his name came up, we scrutinized him, we call him up, we gave him an interview, and we offer him to become the director. Darius DeLong Cousin is the chairman for that organization. We, I did not know him from anywhere. All right? So that's how you build good institution. I was on this platform, and I, and I, and I, and I was critiquing Mr. Alexander Cummings. I, I criticized his performance as a political leader. Am I not the same person here today telling you this man would make a very good central bank governor? It's not personal. So that's how you're supposed to do political party. That's how you're supposed to do government. If Alice Jones is not good as a minister of finance or a minister, don't put him there because he, you know him or because you like him. So to answer that question, it's not a problem of dishonesty. We just don't have institutions. And because we don't have institutions, political institutions, civil organizations, and all our media, quote unquote, institutions, they're not really institutions because they bring people on who they like to hear, who says positive things about Darius DeLong or Josh Weir. So I banned for most of these stations. They, do, they won't have me there. I was on TV, I never gave me an invitation. No, seriously, I'm and telling you. And the reason is- and Nobody it, told me your dad, so ban you too. If, you know, I, I have to fight with you sometimes. <laughs> seriously, no, I do. I have to say, I want to come on. Okay, so that's it. You have corrupt institutions, the media institutions. So they bring in, they bring in George Lobo every day. What the hell, George Lobo knows so much about development, about economics that every station brings in. Are you, if you're looking for people to talk about economics, then there are plenty of people you can bring. If you're looking for people for future leader, they're Jackie, you can bring these people. So let's go back to the other man's question about Darius Delon. The reason you have Darius Delon is because again, Liberia is a cohoof. You bring the people you know. If you're looking for good people and promoting them in your political party, you will have good people. Here's another name. Sarah Bensoe Yenti. This woman is the highest ranking Liberian at the United Nations. Served in the HIV program in Liberia, in Nigeria. Today, she's a country director. Most of you will never hear her name because our media don't want you to hear her name. They want you to hear Barca, Cummings, and we are. This woman should be a foreign affairs minister. This woman is someone who is well respected in the international community, has proven have a nonprofit in Liberia, impeccable record, everything. You take the you take the worst people and you elect them because you want the worst people. So the unity party don't go out there and bring anybody good because they want you to be stick, you want you to be stuck with Borka. ANC don't bring anybody good because they want you to be stuck with Cummings. They want you to they want to put you on the impression that only Cummings is qualified. So the way you invite somebody else to be part of the party or be part of the discussion, that's the problem we have. It's an institution problem. And it's a, that's where our corruption begins and ends. You bring your friends, you call them friends of Alice Jones. Then I start my political party, I bring Dave Jar. So Dave Jar, now anybody who's smarter than me or anybody who has better idea will block them. In a station, he only select the station that, 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 that promotes me. So that's the problem we have. So we're suffering because of our own, uh, what I would say, disingenuousness. We don't that, want to Mr. do Mr. Mr. John, that should be a good segue to the opposition. What right. needs to change from the opposition? What should they be doing now? And when they we say to, opposition, they need to have real, PP. they need to hire each of the first of all, first of all, they need to get rid of the uh, what you call political leader. It makes no sense, all right, 
every political party in Liberia needs to only have a chairman. That chairman should be a professional chairman, someone who knows how to manage, someone who is not even part of the party. Hire a competent chairman in a, in, in a developed country. What a Ghana, you go and you get a campaign manager, a professional campaign manager, because you want your campaign, you want the person should know statistics, the person should know, you know, uh, public relations, the person should know how to deal with the press. Okay? So if I ask you who is the press person for United Party, you couldn't tell me. Who's the communication director for, for Liberty Party, you couldn't tell me. Who's the chief economic policy maker for, for CDC, you can't tell me. You don't have parties. So our problem didn't get come out. I see like, bro, when something happened, then we all had this knee-jerk reaction. You go to our, most of our churches, it's the same way. Somebody just come out, they preach, they bring their friends, their uncle, their brother, they put in there, they stay there forever. Then we find no accountability, no real trustee. So that problem is, you know, one of your, one of your, your, your one of the questioners, right, where did our problem begin? That's where it begins. It begins at the grassroots level at the local organization. Somebody started an organization and make themselves the director of Jedidah. We got Topata, Tipo Na Topata, right? Who started Moja in 1970, he's still the head of Moja today. If an organization cannot run without you, you don't have an organization. And I will say this to the CDC, I will say to the United Party, I will say to the ANC. If you move comments from ANC today, you think you have an ANC? Because you don't have an institution. Mm. You have comments. If you move Josh, we are from CDC today, the senior way early. They don't build institutions because they are afraid of competition. And only through competition, you can be better. Hmm. Alex, let me read a few comments. Oh, Mozilla Zilli say, I always love to hear from this brother. He's talking about you, not me. He's a very resource person of our country. and uh, But that's not the same thought from Yankwe Boma. He said, Mr. Ellis Jones only criticizes, never provides solutions. I wish he can proffer solutions. Uh, Solofumi Adams, he said, but you turned me down, Ja. Solofumi probably is talking about he wanted to come and focus on Liberia, and I said no. He so said, there you go. <laughs> I don't remember that, Solof, uh, uh, Solofumi, but uh, you can still uh, get in touch with our group here and we'll see what you want to talk about. Uh, Joanna Johnson Winker said, nobody is good other than yourself, right? Terrible, 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 Alex. <laughs> and uh, I can tell you, I do the ASC people call this. All Tevina, that to the ASC. Tevina Cole said, I stand with you on Ben Sanvi issue. Uh, Joanna Johnson Winker said, Alex, you are too negative for my liking. <laughs> This I feel feel, feel come and let's talk more. So I wanted you to know that uh, there are some who agree with me. Some don't. There's not really just a nice one. There's be all the ones that gives me because I want to learn. I want to know what people say. Uh, that makes me better. But let me let me go to the question of Yankwe, right? All yeah, right. Yes, let me read Judge Galakwa. Liberia's problem is dishonesty. Liberia needs honest people in public service. You need a lot more than college degree to stop the stealing in Liberia. Okay. So, so again, I disagree with that question because you can. There's no way you evaluating people's honesty. There's no way to say Dave uh, Dennis Ja is more honest than Alice Jones. There's no there's no measurement for that. Okay, the only way you can you can you can build a country is you have a system where people are prosecuted for crimes, and that rule has to apply for everybody. Okay, now you you if you say you're going to govern and you start a political party based on favoritism, based on partiality, right? Nepotism, okay? Then how can you govern, all right, for everyone? So the, that's where the problem starts. So Yankwe, Yankwe, I know he's of ANC supporters of, of supporter of commies. You can see no wrong with commies. I've deb I asked any of them, including the commies himself, let's come and talk about library issue. They are all afraid. So I, that challenge is out there. Let's debate any issue. You say I haven't provided any solution. Go to movement to make Liberia better, and you have you have solutions for almost all the major industries and issues in Liberia, from education to healthcare to the central banking to uh, employment is there. I help formulate those solutions. It's out there for the public. It's out there for ANC. It's out there for CDC. So I think we'd let that quiet that up. 
that I don't provide a solution. I've also written, other than probably running here and, and a few people, more articles on solutions than any librarian. So Google my name and you'll see the articles I've written. And every article I've written, there's a solution article. All right. Mr. Jones, so we'll so our, time, our okay. time is fast spent. So I want us to touch on the last point, which is uh, the media. I know you, you hit on it a little bit as to what needs to change, what next. We want to talk about the media. Before that, we put a question at the beginning that uh, uh, the election result, do the result project a better image or a better Liberia? From the result, do we see that something good is going to happen? 45% say yes, 55% say no. The 45% represent 25% who voted and 31 person, 55% say, uh-uh, nothing is going to change. It's the same old, same old. Let's, let's go to the media. What, what the media needs to do, including focus on Liberia? Well, first of all, the media, some of the media, they need to merge. Okay, because you don't have a media institution if you're not hiring people, you're not hiring writers, you don't have the resources, you don't have, you know, this is mostly part-time job for many people. So what I would recommend the media do, you know, you are good in some areas. You're good in literature, you're good in in-depth, you know, analysis, bringing culture, bringing all these things, right? You got somebody like Ashford Gardner, he's good in, you know, interviewing personality. Right, you got uh spoon radio, they I don't know what they're good in, but they're good in something, maybe covering events. Merge and form one big media entity that can start broadcasting, that can start uh, uh, getting shares, holder, you know, that can have an editorial board. All you guys can be editors in chief, right? You can start doing newspaper, maybe join with front page or, or data observer. We don't have institution in Liberia. Okay, everybody won't go on Facebook and be their own institution. You have Liberia is lacking institution, media institution, financial institution. We have nine banks in Liberia. All now, and then with the exception of LBDI, which to me is just a broken institution. We'll get on that another day. All right. They're all controlled by foreigners. They all run by foreigners. So we don't even have a financial institution. Everybody won't be senator. Why they don't can go run LBDI or run Star Agriculture Bank if you are so smart and wise? Do you think that will help create jobs? Do you think that will help boost the economy? So the reason people won't go into politics is because people don't scrutinize them. Because they, whether they go in there and say, oh yeah, I'm putting proposal. A senator is supposed to write laws. And you're supposed to be influential enough to make sure those laws are passed. In, 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 in anywhere, in Ghana or all these other countries, when the coronavirus came, these countries, most of them provided food for the people. Today in Liberia, the food that was provided, we don't even keep, we, can't, we don't know what happened to it. Okay, so the senators and the representative, including Delon, um, I'm sorry, that's the best for your standard, but for my standard, I don't think we lack better people to run. I'm just, the reason we don't have good people running and you don't hear good people because the political party malign all these people. They do everything to, uh, to, to, to suppress people like me. They, okay, they don't want, they don't want of her. I have articles that I sent to publisher. They won't even publish it. Why? Because it criticized the guy and they will call themselves a media. So the media needs to first combine. And if they don't combine, the media, the media needs to stay true to themselves, meaning what you guys doing, take corrections, you know, uh, 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 learn and, and uh, still do the right thing. In the long run, the Liberian people, the will of the people will, will be true. You see, when I started doing this thing, criticizing, coming out. I was not picking and choosing, oh, this one will be popular. If I criticize George Ria, then I won't have a future in Liberia. Or if I criticize Comis, then people, I don't care. I came with the idea that I will speak truth to power. Even if it's my brother in power or my brother is the head of a political party, I will say the same thing. And we've proven to be correct. So nobody can criticize me of, of not criticizing George Rea because I've been the harshest critic. There is nobody in Liberia has called for the arrest of George Rea. Alex Jones has during the state of emergency. So that's why I can say that confidently that I have no fear of where somebody comments or oh, I'm criticizing. And I've offered more solutions. I've helped build an organization today that people go in and discuss ideas. I work with media. We started the business and economic forum, right? On this very platform. So again, I do it because the country has potential. 
But we just need to be real with ourselves and stop this political, I know this, but it's not going to take us anywhere. If you change the whole Senate in Liberia, Liberia will still be a poor country. The GDP will still be low because that's not the problem. The problem isn't that we're not electing good people. The problem is the whole institution is broken. So whoever gets there, right, they're ineffective from the get-go. And we provide a solution. Go on the site and you'll see some of the solutions we've provided, how you can build the system, working with the government, working with the opposition. But in, these people are not interested. Yes. They will spend $4 million, last point, they will spend 4 $5 million on, ele on election. But they can't spend $250 to build a county website so that people can get information and when people are being raped so people can report it. That's the kind of useless politicians that we have. When it comes to election, you give money to Darius Delon, you give money to George Ria, but you can't start a school in your community. Then you wonder why you, you, the politicians are making a fool out of you people. They only want to be senator because of them pay. That's it. If you cut the senatorial pay today to $500 a month, which I think, if I was finance minister, I cut the, in fact, I get rid of, that boy should get rid of one, to have one house, the house of representative. We don't need two houses. What's the point? We are a poor country. We, don't, we spent almost $40 million on pay and compensation for a bunch of people who contribute nothing to the economy. Other countries have only one house. So those are, those are steps we can take to improve our economy. But which one the political party talking about that? Because why? It's not popular and they want to just win elections. I'm not here to win elections. I'm here to help the country get better. And so when you guys give us the platform, we we'll give you the message. We will find the people that you say that we don't have, and I just list our name, names of people, and we'll continue to push people who are doing the right thing, people who have the qualification, and it's not about education. We don't select anybody because you have a master's degree or because you have a bachelor's degree. We elect people who are telco, excellent, this woman has done it amazing for nothing. She created one of the largest uh, 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 gender violent awareness group in the history of Liberia, on her own, no political party help her. The government did not help her. She has a board of director. She has an institution. You would think that our finance minister would say, okay, you, can, you guys are already set up like an NGO. Let's fund you guys so you can go and start to do educational program and you have to go to violence. You would think that a political party comes and will say, let's put our hands around you. How much do you need so you can go? No, they're not interested. They're interested in making Brandon Samaka senator. Mm. And you expect me to, to support them? I would never support that kind of corruption. Mr. Jones, I know you have a lot. We won't hesitate to Come bring back. you back. Yeah, we won't hesitate to bring you back. But let's uh, close the broadcast tonight. It's uh, wonderful having you and uh, discuss all these things. But I should mention, though, that uh, Yankwe still don't agree with you. Say you just talk, talk, talk. So but then he anyway. wanted to let, let Yankwe start hiding behind uh, uh, comments, let him come on this show and let's debate on any issues in Liberia. Okay, Mr. Mr. Bowman, uh, there's a challenge there for you. We're ready to uh, or comments or, or comments and have this debate. But thank yes. you so much, Mr. Jones. We we want to get your closing comment uh, for the next uh, 40 seconds so that okay. we can close the broadcast. But thank you. And I will say it again the way you improve any society, if you go to the UK and I've been there and you go to Intellectual Square, all right, and you see these young people, Oxford Exchange, and they're debating the national issues, pros and cons. They're talking about issues of health, religion, all these different things. One of the things we don't do in Liberia is we don't, we're not intellectual. We get a college degree, but we don't put it to use. We don't have this discussion. Everybody follow. So if everybody now should be behind one political leader, where the political leader or where the person says. And like I said, this young boy is an educated person. I think he's more educated than me. You see, I haven't provided any solutions. So let's come up and show, let me show my solutions and you show your solutions. But he will not do it because he's incapable. And these are the people who destroy our country because their only purpose is to put that person in power so they can get in power because they're not qualified. They don't have the, 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 the ability to solve real problems. Mm -hmm. So they're politicians. So that, that one, would, he can take that one home and think about it. But like I say again, thank you for having us. We'll come whenever we'll call. If you don't call, we will call you. We will continue to expose the corrupt media. 
from the front page africa down how they selective on who they bring out they need to talk about other people who are not uh, uh, uh who are not politicians and people like Buaka. i mean god have mercy what we're doing with somebody like Buaka at this stage in our life okay it's a disgrace to, 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 to the youth. We have all these young, vibrant people who have done nothing wrong to Liberia. They, not, they didn't make any bad decision by joining a corrupt administration. And we still want to sit here and say, let's bring these people back. And like I said, the only reason these people want to go into government because they, they ain't inadequate anywhere else. Nobody needs their service anywhere else. So... Thank you again for having me, and uh, thank you for you all. You know your comments. Thanks for the for both the uh, the gracious one and the ones that you know not so gracious. I thank you anyway, and uh, it's always good to the, the idea of learning is for you to have exchange, for you to debate, discuss, yeah. and talk about issues, and that's all we're trying to do. And that's what we welcome wholeheartedly right here on Focus on Liberia. We've uh, I've been debating the issue since I was a little boy in Dudukan, and we still committed to that. Uh, we'll continue our broadcast uh, throughout the week tomorrow. Watch out for the political hours. Mr. Ansuni Siem, the man who has emerged as the big political bulldog, is going to come up with a post-election analysis the way you have never heard from anywhere on this planet. Tomorrow, the hour of politics with Mr. Ansuni Siem. On Friday, we're going to have... a uh, Madam Cotto Reeves is, uh, has a new book that she's going to be launching on the 19th, and she's going to be interviewed to, uh, on Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on Focus on Liberia. On Saturday, we have other show, but at 8 o'clock, DJ Curtis. DJ Curtis is starting a new comedy show on Focus on Liberia. And guess what our first show will be? Saturday night with DJ Curtis. DJ Curtis is going to play Alexander Cummings in an exclusive interview right here on Focus on Liberia. And this is what is going to be one of the top political comedy ever in the history of TV in the diaspora. You don't want to miss DJ Curtis on Saturday night with DJ Curtis right here on Focus on Liberia. Mr. Alexander Cummings will be represented here and DJ Curtis is going to play him. Yeah. After that, DJ Curtis is also going to play Boakai in an interview, and the last person, or the third person, DJ Curtis is going to play in an interview, will be President George Weir. Your host, of course, my man, Ansuni Sien, and I will be hosting. You don't want to miss that. On Sunday, we're going to have mechanized agriculture, how we can use mechanization to bring about food security in Liberia. We'll bring someone, uh, Mr. Thomas Abana, who's been doing it right now. He's at a big company in Namibia where he is president. He's going to be joining us from there to talk about mechanization, how it's going to bring about full security. Keep your dial set right here on Focus on Liberia, where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. Until then, on behalf of all of us, we want to say thank you so much for watching. Thanks for our viewers, those who commented, and even those who are going to watch later. Until then, we're going to leave you with the song that always says, we are all Liberians. Remember, we started with the song, Liar Man. We're going to end with, we are all Liberians. Whether you are Liar Man or not, whether you are Rastafarian or not, or whether you can sing, play soccer, uh, legislate, and be president like President we are. we are all Liberians. So we should do all we can to keep our country the glorious land of liberty. Bye-bye for now. We all are the world.